Today I've got 13 rustic farmhouse trays and risers to try. I'm Brandy. This is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. All right, for the first one, I'm going to use this sad looking Lazy Susan. I don't know what this is. It's not actually wood, but it's made to look like wood. It's more like a particle board, but it was stained and scuffed and nicked up. It had chunks missing out of it. It was just in a terrible state. But basically, the bones of it, the shape of it, are still in really good condition. So I'm taking my sanding block from Dollar Tree and just sanding this all down, attempting to get as smooth a surface as I can on here. So my idea was to use my chalk paint to cover up everything. I'll show you how that works out. Starts off pretty strong. Looking pretty good. I'm only going over the top. I'm not going to do the base of it or the bottom underside of it. You see those spots? Yeah, it kept bleeding through. I don't know if there were oil spots or what they were, but this wasn't a cutting board, so I'm not sure what that was just kept coming through so I took it outside and used some spray paint a high gloss and just sprayed it and it did cover it up a little bit better good enough for me to do what I have to do next now to take the glossy appearance away I went back over it with some more of this chalk paint this is rust-oleum and linen white go back over this and let it dry then I'm gonna take this framed artwork and I'm just going to pop that picture out. I'm going to use one of my Pyrex bowls to choose my shape. I'm going to put that on top of my sign. And then just with my pencil, I'm going to make a circle that I can cut out. I tried to push it a little bit away from the bowl so that I could get a bigger circle around there. I used a pencil instead of a pen so I wouldn't have any marks and I could clean it up. Now I'm just trimming right to the outside of that line that I drew. Again, so it would be a little bit bigger. You can see my little paper line there. And so that's how it's gonna look. And I'm just going back over with my pencil and erasing. The little pencil marks. So now we have to put this down. And I noticed on the picture it has some distressing. So I'm going to do a little distressing of my own here with a little bit of this Waverly antique wax and a chip brush that I got from Dollar Tree. Now distressing items like this is a little bit new to me. I don't usually go this heavy handed, but I wanted to give it a try. I mean, it's just paint, right? You can always go back over it with some white if it's too much. Just smudging in a little bit of it with my fingers. Decide where I want to put it. So I'm going to use my Crafter Spray Glue. Lightly spray it toward the center on the top. And then gently put this down where it looks like it might be close to center. And this, this works very nicely. It doesn't leave any lumps and bumps underneath. Just going to smooth it out a little bit with this little, I don't even know what this little piece of plastic is. I've had it for a while. I think it's a pumpkin scraper. Isn't it silly what we can use to craft with? Okay, so I'm going back on the top to kind of blend my colors a little bit. Little light bit of that antiquing wax and I'm just kind of knocking it off there on that piece of cardboard. And then I'm going back around here. My confidence is up a little bit. I'm adding a little bit heavier distressing. And I like it. I think it turned out great. Looks like chippy wood. So that's my lazy I'm start Susan. Off with some candle holders from Dollar Tree. We're going to use three of these one for each riser. And then I'm going to use these little plates. I would have preferred the ones without the texture on the bottom, but they work just fine. 
I'm going to use some rubbing alcohol and a spare sock to clean my my pieces off. We don't want any oils on there. We're going to get those all off. I'm going to wipe both sides, bottom and top of each one of these and also the candlesticks themselves. They are all going to be wiped down nicely to remove any dust and oils from the surface. Certainly want to pay close attention to the edges there that will be attached to the plate. So we're going to use some Fixile Adhesive for a permanent hold. And we're going to alternate this on these little sections of the candle holder so that my glue does not overlap. Then I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue and my little glue gun here. Add that on there on the places where there wasn't any of the other glue. I'm going to center it by eye as closely as I can. I stood up to kind of look down over the top of it through the camera and then I'm just going to press it down for a moment and let it sit. I'm going to do the same thing for each one of these. I say Gorilla Glue glue sticks because they have a seem, in my opinion, to have a better hold. But you can use whatever you like. Any type of adhesive also that you like, you can use for your candlesticks. Some people have more luck with this and some people have more luck with non-silicone adhesives. Now these need to be set aside for a, several hours, I'd say 24 hours to be on the safe side. We're going to take a variety of paints, Rust-Oleum and Krylon in copper, flat black, flat white, and in a, I believe I had a glossy white. I'm going to use this black furniture marker as well. So I use two coats of the flat paint on this one and I'm going to decoupage that. So what we're going to do to the top of this one. So I found some this was in a little paper pad, decorative paper pad. I found a circle that fits good enough for the top of the candle riser that I'm just going to use this as a guide to give me the right type of a, the right size circle to put on the top. So as I'm cutting my paper, I am pretty much holding my scissors straight and turning my paper when I cut. I have always done it this way. I don't know that I have ever shown it in my videos, but it was brought to my attention that I do it this way. When I watched the Crafting Cousins and they gave some tips on their tip videos, and one of them was to turn the paper instead of the scissors. It's easy to do. So it fits nicely down in there. I'm going to take a nice soft brush I don't want to mess up my paint finish and I'm going to use some Mod Podge, matte Mod Podge. I'm going to put it down here and brush all over the top surface and into the edges where my paper is going to go so that it will stick down. I'm going to put this on, gently pat it down and then once it is completely dry, I'm just going to set it aside, once it's completely dry you can go back over with Mod Podge to seal it in and be sure you get around any of the edges pretty nicely with that um, brush. Make sure that everything is sealed so that nothing will pucker or wrinkle on you. It is raised on the outside, a little sunk down in the middle, so just focus your the rubbing on the outside there. Okay, so the next one I spray painted with black and I put the copper on just the top tray part. So you can see when I turned it upside to do upside down to do my extra look, um, bleh, bleh, coat of paint, I uh, it wasn't quite dry enough. It was dry to touch, but it didn't dry long enough. So it had some little chips in the paint. I'm using this furniture marker that I showed you before to go around the top of this and just cover any of that up. And I like it better this way too. Do you see me raising up my hand awkwardly? It was to keep my wrist off of the wet paint. So that's why I was lifting up like that. Just going around the edges here to make sure that it blends into the black paint that was already on the surface. So there we go for that. 
And the technique I'm going to use on this is just going to be a distressing. And I'm going to do it with um, some copper paint. I'm going to start off with the darker because I thought it was a better match. This little brush. I'm going to start off by putting the dark paint in there. And then it looks like it's too dark. So I'm going to mix just a little bit more of a lighter color into it. Gonna mix that well and then remove most of the paint from the brush on that little tray that I'm using and then just on a scrap of paper. Then I'm going to go around with this brush and hit all of the raised areas with it. This is dry brushing because essentially there's not much paint left on that brush. And so when this is distressed, the desired look I want is that it's an old, old piece of tarnished copper. Maybe that has been painted and it is chipped away or been rubbed away. And of course, I realize that copper tarnish is a greenish color, but you know, you get what I was going for with this, right? So you can see the little streaks on there you can see on the raised areas how it just picks up that paint it catches that paint we're going to do this all the way around on the edges under there and on that top ridge also ideally not dropping your brush i just went around where it was close to the flat surface too on the top you can add more if you'd like or you can do less whatever looks good to you and i'm going to take that brush add a little more brush it off just a little bit and then i'm going to go back over here on this edge where i use the furniture paint Okay, so now the third one, I use the black paint, two layers of it all over it. Let it thoroughly dry. And then I'm going to take my white chalk paint and apply two coats of that, letting it dry very well in between. Just slapping it on there, kind of messy. And we're going to do a wet distressing on this third one. Now with this one, you wanna be sure that you get underneath the riser, also underneath that top plate, so that it's all covered up and you won't be able to see it when this project is done. Okay, gonna close off my can there. And then you can see here that I'm taking a damp piece of a sock. You can use any rag or a baby wipe that you would like. And I'm just kind of wiping. Now you don't want to scrape too hard or you'll go all the way through the black and onto the glass. So just be sure that you, you watch what you're doing. You do it with a little bit of force, but carefully watching because all you want to see is the black. You do not want to see through to the glass. And this will give it the distressed look that we want. I'm going to go over the ridges, just where you would get natural wear. Just going back underneath this plate. Um, I had myself doing this from the beginning, and the footage is not there. I don't know what happened. I cannot find it. So I'm trying to make it up by um, doing a little extra. This is a little more distressing than I probably would have put on here, but I needed to show you how to do it. Now keep rotating your cloth because that chalk paint really sticks in there and then you, it kind of will smear but it won't go through. So just keep sure, make sure that you rotate it. Here are our threes together. You can see all the little brush strokes, little distress areas on here. Now you could always put an extra coat of copper if you would like if it bothers you that you can see the shadow there underneath it but I didn't feel like it was necessary, so I left it like that. And this is with this extra coat of Mod Podge on top to keep it safe. 
it's nice and sealed. I think this would look great as shabby chic. A French farmhouse. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this Actually, video. This is more like a resin or something like that. Not exactly wood, but it's made to look like wood. So that's what we're going to call it. You can see the little writing on the bottom. I don't have a date on there though, but I thought the design was just beautiful. And it's all elevated and dimensional. It's kind of dirty. It's got a, a ring on it from a maybe somebody had put a cup there or something that leaked onto it. So I'm just going to take an alcohol wipe or baby wipe, whatever. You can also use just a damp cloth and just wipe all over this. I wasn't sure how it would be submerged in water since it's got that little spot that's kind of peeling up. And to be honest, I didn't really know how it would take paint with that little peely spot. But it worked out better than anticipated. So once it is clean and dry, I'm going to take some plaster chalk paint. And I'm just going to start putting this thick paint all over it. Now I'm using a chippy brush. It's got long bristles and this makes putting the paint down into all those little recessed areas a whole lot easier. I'm just going back and forth, up and down and just kind of scrubbing it into those spots. And when it starts to look kind of bare, I'll go ahead and dip the brush back in the paint again. This has little vines on the side. It's got these beautiful little floral wispies right there. Look at all that detail just from putting the white paint. You can really see it. You could leave your project just like this if you would like, or you can do like I do and just distress it. Now, since we use chalk paint, you could wet distress with a baby wipe if you wanted to. You could use a sanding block, a piece of sanding paper. You could use an emery board or like a little, you know, fingernail file to go around these edges. Whatever you have to do your distressing with, you can go ahead and do that. So here it is with just a piece of um, sand and paper just folded over. And I'm just going over all those little vines, getting in the grooves. I kind of want to get on the high spots and leave the paint in the low areas. That's actually how objects wear when they have paint. It's the areas that are on top that are easiest to be touched that get all the scratching. That's the areas that we love the most, right? So any extra details that you want to bring out, be sure that you go over your items just the same way. There are so many vases and water pitchers and decorative candles, things like that, that have these details that maybe don't have the color that you like. But look at the difference. This is definitely more of what I like. So because this is where I want it to be, I'm taking a microfiber cloth and a little bit of some clear wax. And I'm going to start going over the entire project. I'm just kind of using my finger to get down in the lower areas too because I want to protect the surface. And I love the way that this looks. This is so pretty and I'm so glad. This is one of my most recent um, Goodwill items that I've picked up. And I'm going to Goodwill today, by the way. But this is one of my most recent pickups and I just knew I could tell that there was going to be a lot of potential in this little piece and it is just gorgeous to me. But yeah, think when you go to Goodwill, you know, don't just look at something as it is. Look at the potential that it could have because you would be surprised at the difference you can make with just a little bit of paint. So if you don't want something that's real complicated, and I know I've done sanding and paint and cleaning and waxing, but it doesn't take long and it's chalk paint. Plus I have a little dryer that I use in between all my paint. So everything dries quickly. And then that wax just sets up on its own. You don't have to do anything else to it. So these are some thrifted candle stands or whatever you want to call them, candle risers. And then these wood slices will be linked in the description box for you. These actually came from Arteza. I get a lot of my crafting products from them. I'm going to be using some clear wax, some antiquing wax, and I think, yeah, I'll be using some wood glue and hot glue, things like that. First, I am going to take my candle risers here, and I am just going to sand those down. I'm going to make sure that I get all of that area nice and smooth. 
I love these. I've had them for years and I've used them for different things in my decor. But now I think it's time to give it new life. So that's what I'm gonna do. See the difference, sanded and not? And once they're both sanded, I'm just gonna take a baby wipe and I'm gonna wipe all of the dust off of there. And the bottoms look terrible, don't they? Okay, and then I'm gonna use a sanding block also on the top of these wood slices. Be very careful. Do you see the flaking that's going around um, when I get to the edges where the bark is? That will flake off, so just try to be very gentle on those pieces. Wipe off your dust, and then so I'm going to start off by putting a clear wax on this one. You're going to see the difference and what it looks like when you put wax, different types of waxes on the raw wood. This clear wax brings out almost a yellow in these wood slices. My dog is not happy. I think she's barking at the, the geese out there. So if you hear that, forgive me. And then we're going to do the same technique on the on one of the little stands here. So it's a clear wax on this stand and the clear wax on one of the wood slices. And you can see the difference here from waxed and not waxed. Now we're gonna move on to the darker wax. Now I'm gonna give you two options here because at first I thought, okay, well we'll just make a stain and we'll put that on there. Not realizing how dry this wood is. Do you see how it is just absorbing it? I can't even really move it around on there. But, you know, I was committed. I had already started, so I just went ahead and finished it off. Hoping, crossing my fingers, dreaming, anticipating better results. And I'm also taking it around on the edge of the bark so that it too will be sealed and not flake all over the place. I'm going to use the same little stain that I made on the riser because this is gonna be the base of that one, so I want it to match. But you can see here, it just soaked it up. Even in this one, it soaked it right in there. There's no luster at all compared to the other one. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm just gonna use the antiquing wax in its original form, so that's what I did. I took my microfiber cloth took some of that wax, put it down, and then just moved it all around my candle riser. And I like this so much, I thought, okay, well, when the wood round is dry, we're gonna repeat this process because I think that it's gonna give us a better result. I'm so happy that you're here with me today and that you've been coming by and watching, see the difference? And watching my videos and commenting, I love it. All right, do you see how that's soaked up? I do not like that finish. But you can leave it if you like it. But now, again, it's absorbent, so I'm using small sections, a little amount at a time, and just really working that in. I use small sections because I don't want any marks to show up in the stain. And it didn't, it turned out, it turned out fine. Those little dark areas you see were just the way the wood is. I didn't spill any or anything. Okay. So now that that is done, I'm gonna go back with my clean microfiber cloth and wipe off all of the extra wax that did not soak in yet into that first round that we did, the light one. I'm just rubbing that in carefully and I'm gonna do the same on the riser. Wipe off the excess wax because we don't need all that extra on there. See the difference? So the side that doesn't have anything on it is gonna be our underside. We're gonna use some wood glue, and I just like to take a brush and dot a little bit on because this is gonna give us a permanent hold. Well, we hope for a permanent hold. And I didn't put it directly onto the metal. I've got it kind of over on the wood. And then I'm gonna use some hot glue so that we have a quick hold. I'm gonna stand above it and get it as centered as possible. And then there you go. So I've got a little bit of my bark don't worry about that bark now. We're gonna fix that. 
and this is how it's going to look. You don't want to put wax on the underside because the wax is going to interfere with it sticking down. And you don't want that to happen. So just don't worry about the underside. If you want to go back and stain it after you've got your riser put together, that's absolutely fine. I'm not worrying about it. Nobody's looking under my risers. Same thing with this darker one. We're going to put it down, give it a minute to set up, and then when you flip it over, this is how it looks. I love this. This screams rustic to me. It absolutely does fit into my house perfectly. All right, so now I'm gonna take some white wax and go over my darker wax. Not necessary, you don't have to, but again, the wood is so porous. I really wanna make sure that it stays nice and clean and easy for me to dust and take care of. And then you can wipe it back off. Now we're gonna have to fix our edges. So I'm going to use some of this matte Mod Podge on a brush and go all the way around the bark. Try not to get it on the top, clean it up if you do. And definitely it's okay to get that and I actually encourage you to get that down in all the cracks and over the little top because you see it just it flakes so badly and I can just imagine myself dusting this and every time I dust it pieces of bark flying off everywhere. I want to maintain the bark. I like it. I like the look of it. So it's gotta be sealed. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Okay. Now, you can see on the underside, I'm taking that Mod Podge and going around as much as I can down there too. Um, hindsight, I got this on a little thicker than I probably should have, and it almost has like a little glaze to it. But that's okay because everything is staying in place nicely. And this is how they're gonna look once they are done and dry. Yes, and I think that they are very nice. I think that when you buy thrift items or when you're shopping for thrift items, often you overlook things because you don't see the potential. But I really want you to see the potential. Subscribe to my channel and I will do my best to inspire you, keep you curious, keep you learning. I believe in you and I know, I know that we all have creativity within us. It's just a matter of believing in yourself and tapping into that. Whatever brings you joy is exactly the right thing for you. We're going to make a mini tray to go on our tear tray. Yep, that's right. We're going to use some little, these little dollar store jingle blocks. We're gonna use whatever beads you like. I'm using a beautiful green color. We're gonna start by just making a little base, I guess you could say. And I'm just using my glue to place these together. You can use wood glue if you want, but I'd like to get my projects done quickly so that I can share them with you. So we're gonna use the quickest option, which is the hot glue. Now we have a little base and we need to upholster our base. So I've got some of this thrifted fabric. I got a bunch of it, just a big piece. I've used it in other projects and now I'm using it again here and I love it. I'm going to just wrap this sort of like a present maybe. I'm going to start from one side, press that down, protect your fingers, don't forget. I'm still using the cool glue. I'm going to trim off a little bit because now I know what size I think I'm going to need here. And it is not gonna be perfectly neat on the bottom, but I'm not going for perfection on the bottom of my project. I'm just not doing it. But if you would like to, you certainly can trim that down so that it looks like the other side. I'm just gonna overlap this one. Pull it nicely. I don't wanna distort my stripes, so I'm trying to be conscious of that. And then, once that is glued down, I'm going to start kind of deciding how I want to fold over and glue my edges. So this is always kind of a process where I'm trying to decide how I want to do something and the best way to show you how to do something. So that was not the way that I want to show you. We're going to notch it out instead. And I think this is going to be a lot better. It's going to be less bulky and I think easier for you to understand. So you see we just notched out that section. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to notch it out just on the bottom part. I got a little bit of glue on my scissors, so now they're, I need to clean them up so they'll cut nicely again. But you see how it's notched? 
fold it down with a little hot glue there. So you're gonna press it down into the hot glue. And then that little triangle part there, a little envelope flap, we're gonna fold it over just like that. So I'm gonna add a little more hot glue across the bottom, fold it, now go to the other side, same process, add a little hot glue, fold it, a little more glue, and then fold that over. And then you can tack it down on the bottom as well or trim it off. We're going to use the beads as feet. So I'm just gonna start in my corner. I'm using my fingers and my thumb to try to center where I want them to be so they're placed in the right area on each corner, the same distance from the corner. I'm gluing my fingers down. It's on the cool temperature though, so it's okay. I didn't burn myself. And then I'm gonna do the third corner and then one more corner. And we have a little riser. You can put a little candle on here, a little flickering candle, definitely not a, a real flame candle, but a flameless candle. Or you can put your little block on there like I'm gonna do. Now, we're gonna take this little pedestal, and it came originally from Target, but I got mine at the thrift store. I'm gonna use some Mod Podge. To, so that we want our paint to stick better, you can go ahead and spray some type of a sealer on the plastic first. It'll help better, in my opinion anyway. So we're gonna go over with that same plaster chalk paint and go around all these little bumpy areas and every part of this pedestal. Now I'm going side to side with the paint and then up and down. I found that's the easiest way to not ruin your brush but to get around all of those little spaces with the dots. See, this really clings so much better and I only had to do one coat of paint with that sealer under there. I am a very proud plaid ambassador and I get goodies from them. So I like to try them and I like to give you the information. So if you enjoy crafting, you might wanna check out plaid. All right, so I'm going to take my little pedestal and my Mod Podge and my napkin, one layer of it of course. I'm gonna go all over the top of this with a nice even layer of Mod Podge. I'm going to lay this napkin down gently on the top and just kind of gently, gently, gently move my fingers and hands around. I don't recommend that you pull. I did that and realized that I shouldn't have, but I didn't damage it, thankfully. And then I'm gonna use my little roller here to just press out any little wrinkles or bubbles. Now, there are going to be some wrinkles in here and I'm not, I'm not bothered by that. So here are those scissors again. I'm gonna use those to go all around my edges because I need to get close. I'm gonna cut off as close as I can get with my scissors and then I'm going to pick it up and trim it a little bit closer. I don't need all of this excess and I don't want to sand it off, but you could use your sander if you wanted. But look how nicely just going around the edges with your scissors at a slant, it makes that edge. Now I wanna start by sealing off my edges, so I'm gonna use my Mod Podge here and just make sure that I have plenty to lay that down. It is not exactly perfect. My cutting lines are not exactly perfect, but they are perfect for me. They're perfectly rustic cottage and I am good with that. Don't you just love what you do when you're crafting? I know I do. I love crafting. I love creating for y'all. I love sharing, you know, ideas with y'all and, and giving you ways that you can save money while still making things that look wonderful in your home. At least I always set out to inspire you. So if you like this video and these creations, I'll appreciate a thumbs up. It means so much. So here's our beautiful little bunny pedestal. Isn't it cute? It's not food safe, but you can use it as a riser for whatever you want to use. Put your decor on it or, you know, put a secured candle on it or maybe three candles would be pretty together. The little battery operated candles. There's I love the this. pedestal there or the cake riser or cake plate, whatever you want to call it. Which one of these projects do you think that you would try? We're gonna start off with some of these little metal caps that came from the Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree. Hopefully you can find these. I think they've pretty much been everywhere. 
And I'm going to use some pedestals that I already had that were thrifted. So one of them is a spool from something that came from Target originally. I think it was like a string that had clips on it. And then the other one is just like a little threshold, something like that, cupcake stand. We're gonna use some of my antiquing wax, of course. And I've got some wipes. Okay, I'm gonna start by adding some of that antiquing wax onto my wipe here. We're not gonna do the top. This is going to be our top. We're gonna to leave that alone, but everything else is gonna get a good wipe down with that wax. So I'm just protecting my table with a little scrap of cardboard paper. Gonna go all the way around the bottom and around the edges. I love the beautiful color this gives. If you don't use a, a, like a wet wipe and you use a brush, it's gonna be a much darker, almost opaque finish. You really won't be able to see any wood grain through it. And I like the wood grain, so the moisture from the wipe gives just enough, you know, it, it's just enough to kind of water down or weaken that stain so you can see the beautiful wood grain. Okay, so I've even done the underside of the top, but I'm not gonna do the top. Okay, so here's the top, unfinished, and we're gonna set this right on top. This is gonna give us a little riser. You can fill in these holes with like a little piece of um, aluminum foil if you want to, but the way I cover it, we're not gonna have to do that. All right, to hold this down, so that nothing I put on there, if it's breakable, will fall off. I'm gonna use a little Gorilla Glue and hot glue. The hot glue is gonna give us a quick, quick fix until the Gorilla Glue has time to sit up. So now I'm gonna add the hot glue. You wanna put that on second because it uh, dries faster than the Gorilla Glue. So you don't want your hot glue to dry before you get your top on there. Now to try to make it in the center, I'm standing up and looking down over my project. That's why you see this angle. I'm looking down through my viewfinder on my camera. All right, look at this riser. She is complete, with an exception of her embellishments. So now I'm gonna take some of this ribbon. This was thrifted. This actually may have been a piece of, this I think came from my neighbor. She went through her craft supplies uh, over the summer sometime, I think. And she gave me like two boxes of ribbon and all kinds of good stuff. So thank you, Angie, if you are listening. You can see that I'm using it. Protect your fingers and then I'm going to put a do little dot of glue in each one of those ridges right in the bottom of each one. Dot dot dot. And then I'm going to take my finger and press it, try to center it, and press it down into the glue dots. You're going to want to work fairly quickly with this because hot glue on metal dries very quickly. So you gotta, you gotta keep moving. Now, in order to not bore you to death, I have sped mine up. I really don't move that fast. But this is what you do. You wanna try to keep it in the center of each one of those ridges and go all the way around. I hope that all of my viewers and subscribers who have been in the path of Ida are good. I hope that you are all safe. I know we had company from Louisiana that fled and came to Southern Alabama to stay with us and we were so happy to have them. I think the kids just thought it was like camp. They just loved it. They loved seeing their cousins and you know, we thought we were safe. We thought we were in the clear and I'll be darned if a tornado did not come and hit our property and we had a huge mess. So I'm behind a little bit. I appreciate your understanding, your patience and your support as we work through getting the cleanup and everything done. And um, yeah, so there's that. Y'all are in my prayers. There is our little riser and I wanna add a little bow to it. So I'm just gonna do this simple bow you've seen me do about a thousand times. Like a little shoelace bow. You're gonna grab your ribbon, make two little ears, twist them around one another, and then tighten it a little at a time so that you get your little ears the right size, excuse me for being out of the camera there, and then trim your tails up the way you want the tails to look. You don't have to put anything on yours. I think it finishes up the, uh, the tray nicely. I think it's a cute little rustic and almost cottagey feel because of the bow and the little you know added ribbon. It gives it a little more femininity, and I like that. I love the color of this ribbon. It's like a tan, kind of a very muted or I don't know like very muted gold 
or tan color. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. I may be struggling a little bit through this video, but hey, I'm here. I'm here and I'm doing it. I don't want to be out of the picture for too long. I know you, we need a constant flow of inspiration and, and hope right now. And here is the little riser. Now keep in mind, you do not want to use a real candle. That's dangerous. See what you can find that is a photo candle. From Goodwill. And this came from a store called Dirt Cheap. It was originally from the Target Bullseye, I think. And I'm gonna take my sanding block and just go ahead and start by removing the words and the pictures on this on this nice little piece of wood. Takes a little bit of elbow grease. And uh, at some point I would like to invest in a electric sander, but for now, I'm gonna get a little more bite by a rougher grit sandpaper. And this really made a big difference. There's really no particular way that I do this. Sometimes in circles, sometimes up and down, sometimes side to side. You know how it is with sanding. I'm just trying to get an even appearance all the way across. Look at that pretty grain. That's really nice. This is a heavy piece too. And it was a nice little decoration on its own. I got three of these for, I think they would have been about 20 cents a piece at the store. Um, it's a clearance, like a discount store. So then I'm going to remove all of my dust with this rag and clean my table off. Of course, I'm just running my hand along there to see if I have all of it smooth. This is a little cameo by my son. He wants to show y'all how to make a perfect circle. It says you put your wrist down, you hold the pen, and then you just turn the paper. And then he went on to tell me that the mistake was mine because there's a dent in my table. So then I cut it out for him so he could use it for crafting. Okay, back to the sandpaper. Now we're gonna use these little knobs, these little drawer pulls, and I'm going to use the top of them. I'm going to rub them on this heavy grit sandpaper. This is just so that they won't slide around and so they're a little bit flatter. They're kind of slightly curved and I wanna make them a little bit flatter. Now, when I was sanding, I totally neglected the back here and then thought, well, I'll just take this off, but I'm not gonna use this for anything else. So I kind of stopped short and didn't finish that. Wiped it all off, got the dust off, and I'm going to use my Elmer's wood glue. I use that rubber band to keep a spare brush. I'm gonna take this brush, dip it in here. I hate the spout on these things and you can be more precise with a brush. So I'm just going to add on a couple of dots of this glue. I didn't get quite enough. So you're gonna see four dots of the glue. That's gonna keep it there for a long time. And then I'm gonna take my glue gun and I'm going to make four little dots right in between. It's my understanding if you mix your glues that they won't work as well as they're supposed to. So I'm trying to keep those separate. I'm gonna eyeball the corner there and I'm going to press these down. And you know it already, these are going to be legs. And this is going to be a little riser. So I'm gonna do this with each one of these little knobs that are now legs and the little decorative sign, which is now going to be a riser. I absolutely love this and I will certainly be doing this again. This was so easy and so inexpensive. I mean, for less than a dollar, I have this heavy duty, rustic looking farmhouse riser. I'm gonna take my clear, matte clear Rust-Oleum 2X outside and give it one light spray. And it does change the surface just a little bit. It darkens it up just a little. I don't have a problem with that. And then here's the riser. I just set a little basket there. I like to collect these little mini baskets to put beads and such in. I'm blessed to have all the support from all you guys because you could spend your time anywhere you wanted, any way you wanted, on any other channel or doing something else, and you chose to spend this time with me, and it means a lot. On to the next project. So I'm going to scrape it off. You know you can't blame a DIYer for doing what they feel like. 
try my darndest to scrape it off and scratch it off. I have used a bunch of tools. I used all kinds of sanding blocks and pads. This was very difficult to get off. I did take it outside, use a little bit of a hand sander, and bring it back in, and this is how it looked. I did wipe it off. I did not want to sand it completely down because I'm going to add the color back in it. This was a booger, and there's still a couple little dots of paint that are still in there, and I just decided to leave those and call it aged. We'll call that rustic, won't we? That's what we do. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my wood tint, and I believe it's walnut, and I'm going to lay this on and wipe this off. This is a tint. It doesn't have a foul odor. It dries quickly, and this wood, whatever kind it is, is very absorbent, so it really sucks up this um, this color. It really sucks it up. And I'm glad because I like it. But I'm going to lay it on and wipe it off just like this. I went and got a rag. And so after you put it on and you wipe it down, you can see the wood grain through it again. If you leave it on thick, you won't be able to see your wood grain. You, wipe, you put it on and you wipe it back off. And it's beautiful and exactly the finish and the texture that I like. I don't want to bore you, but I do want you to see the way that I'm using the brush and the way that I'm wiping it off. You can see the order of it, how it's done, so that there's no confusion. Now on the inside, I'm just going to make sure that I go around the bottom, the size, the lip, and uh, get full coverage on all of that and I pressed that color down into the little areas where I really had to bear down on the sander to get it to get the color out. This was a booger to do but I'm gonna tell you it was well worth it because this is a gorgeous little I think it's like a little dough bowl isn't it pretty and it's just a little thing it's so cute. Okay so once it is completely dry this is how it looks it does lighten up quite a bit. So the next thing we need to do is to seal it. And that's what I have this for. This is my translucent wax from Folk Art. I love, love all the products that I get from Plaid. I am an ambassador and I get to try all kinds of products and I'm so grateful because they have some amazing quality and very affordable prices. So I'm gonna take a very soft cloth, and this is a piece of a car detailing cloth that comes from Dollar Tree, so it's the white fuzzy ones. And I'm gonna use that to lay this wax on here. Now you need to follow the instructions to see how long it says that the wax needs to stay on before you buff it down. But you can see it gives it sort of a sheen there while it's wet. And I'm gonna use the same, really the same technique. I'm just actually kind of massaging it into there. I'm giving a little more attention putting on this wax than I did when I was putting on the paint um, to just make sure that I really, really cover all the surfaces well and I don't have areas that are more matte than others. You know, you just want everything to look nice and complete and well done because that's what puts your projects as more high-end looking than others. So now I'm buffing. It's all dried. I followed my instructions and waited the dry time. I think I actually waited two days. Now I'm just taking a nice little cloth here. It's a little scrap of fabric. And I am buffing or rub it in little circles all the way around to finish off this little bowl. And I think that this is a beautiful everyday piece that you can use anywhere in your house. I wanted to do a little something extra with this so you may see this in another project. Yeah, you'll be seeing this again, I think. Not bad, totally rustic, love it. And you click that little bell and put the quotes around it, you'll get notifications every I'm time I put this out pedestal. Content. I'm not sure what originally was on it because I got it like this, like something was broken off. And then this little cake pan, they both came from you guessed it, Goodwill. I'm gonna take my Fix All Adhesive after I've wiped this down and I'm just gonna add some around there. This is gonna make it stick for a long time. 
ideally. Then I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue and put that in the spaces where I don't have the other glue because I really want this to last a long time. But I've wanted this for a long time and I'm so pleased with it. I'm glad to be able to share it with you today because it's very easy. You could probably do this with a candlestick or something like that if you wanted to. If you had a new cake pan, you could always age it with some vinegar. So, give it some time to dry. And when it's nice and secure, you can choose some ribbon. These all came from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just trying to make a decision on which one I want to use here. They're both very nice. They're both definitely farmhouse aesthetic. But this one really speaks to me. I love it. And because of the lace having a little more, um, I guess, flexibility, it goes around a curve better so that you don't have any puckers and it doesn't stand out. It's easier to curve with all those little holes in there. So I'm just going to quickly work around this pan because again, metal and glue, hot glue, it dries really fast. You can see there that I didn't move it fast enough and it already had dried. So just try to work quickly, protect your fingers, and keep it going there. And go all the way around. The little zigzag worked better than the single line. So that's what I switched to. And you're gonna go all the way around the edge right underneath that little lip. You could leave this off if you didn't wanna add this. You could Your pedestal could just be without the ribbon if that's the way you like it. now I want to bring some of that ribbon, the look of that ribbon down. So I'm adding about 14 inches of the ribbon here around the neck of this. You could do it up higher because there's a bunch of uh, on this spindle type candlestick or whatever this pedestal thing is. Um, it, there's a bunch of little curves so you could put it around whichever curve that you like. And I'm just going to trim it off so it's not hanging down on my surface. I'm not doing any dovetails on this. I'm just going to cut slants in it. And it's just a simple shoelace bow, um, very easy to do. A little dot of glue here and there will keep your ribbon staying down where you want it. The tray, and here it is loaded up with decor. Try this video next, I think you'll like it. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.